help. I'm a prisoner in the library. Chapter 9. Madame Morgana sees all and knows all. Now that we've rescued the cat, Miss Finton said, we might just as well get back upstairs to the fire. The poor thing needs warming. I wish somebody would rescue us, Joe Beth mourned. Only if we scream, nobody would hear us. Shipwrecked sailors send up flares. Mary Rose had seen that once in a movie on TV. Flares, Miss Fenton said in a strange voice. Rockets. Of course, we'll shoot off rockets. The two girls looked at each other. Joe Beth huddled against her sister. There she goes again, she whispered. Rockets, Mary Rose repeated. We'll shoot off rockets? What kind of rockets? Joe Beth squeezed the cat so hard it gave a protesting cry. Don't you girls know what rockets are? Miss Fenton demanded. Roman candles, fireworks, 4th of July, whoosh! She waved her good arm in the air. Beautiful colors exploding in the sky. She looked up at the ceiling and the girls did too, almost expecting to see fireworks. The trick now is, Miss Fenton said in a somewhat doubtful voice, finding them down here. We'll just have to pick our way around things very carefully. You girls will have to open a few boxes for me. She began to walk deeper into the basement. Mary Rose followed quickly. Joe Beth put the cat down and went after them. Now mind you don't bump into the animals, Miss Fenton warned. The sisters stopped walking. Animals in the basement? What kind of animals? What kind of animals? Joe Beth whispered. I think I'm going to faint. I am. I'm going to faint. She squeezed her eyelids shut. Children don't faint. Grown-ups faint. Anyway, take a look. Mary Rose held her candle high. She had already taken a peek. Come on, open your eyes. When Joe Beth took a chance and opened her eyes, she saw the animals directly to her left. There were four of them. A lion with its head thrown back, a snarling tiger, a gentle-eyed llama, and a large graceful swan. All were made of wood and once had been brightly painted. But all the animals were now faded and peeling in spots. From a merry-go-round, Miss Fenton told them, my grandfather was a collector. He loved wooden figures. The house is full of them. I think the box I'm looking for is behind the hurdy-gurdy. Come along. Rush, rush, rush. That was Miss Fenton. Jo Beth wished she wouldn't hurry them so. She wanted to stroke the merry-go-round animals, especially the tiger. He was so fierce and scary, it gave Jo Beth a delicious, cold feeling right down her spine. <clears throat> What's a hurdy-gurdy? Mary Rose asked. A hurdy-gurdy? Why, that's a hand organ what we used to call a barrel organ. A man used to wheel one of these around on the city streets. He'd stop where he'd see a lot of people and he'd turn this handle, see? Miss Fenton cranked the handle and a tune stumbled out. It sounded rusty and tired as if some of the notes were missing. When I was a little girl, my father took me to New York one time. We saw the hurdy-gurdy man and the children dance in the street while he kept turning the handle on the organ. Even some of the women danced too. Sometimes the hurdy-gurdy man had a monkey with him, dressed up in a little red suit and a funny little hat. When the man stopped playing, the monkey would come around and hold out his cap, and people would drop money into it, and then he'd bring it back to the hurdy-gurdy man. I like that, Mary Rose laughed. Why don't they do that anymore? Old-fashioned, like the dresses you put on, and this house. I wish we had more light down here. Miss Fenton put out her hand and touched a glass case sitting on a high box. While the girls walked around the hurdy-gurdy, admiring its large red-spoked wheels and trying to turn the handle, Miss Fenton picked up a coin from beside the glass case and dropped it into a slot. Flashing lights that flickered off and on, white and purple and red, lit up the head and arms and bright green blouse of a waxen-faced woman with large black glaring eyes. Only the upper half of her body could be seen. She had coal black hair, tightly pulled back, long glittering earrings, and a bright spot of red on each cheek. Now her tight lips parted. She spoke. She turned her head and stared straight at Mary Rose and Joe Beth. Put another penny in, she commanded, and I will tell you my your fortune. Come a cranky, Miss Fenton swore. I didn't mean to startle you. That's Madame Morgana. She tells fortunes. I just thought we could use some more light in here. She runs on batteries. It was lighter, but the girls didn't feel braver. It was better in the dark, Joe Beth said. 
Well, I've got to feed her pennies till I find the rockets. She dropped another coin in and walked around Madame Morgana. Come along, Mary Rose. I'm sure I found it. You'll have to get it open for me. Mary Rose followed Miss Fenton, but she kept staring over her shoulder at Madame Morgana, whose arms were w moving one way while her head was turning another in tiny, jerky motion. Madame Morgana picked up a card and slipped it into a small opening under the glass. This is your fortune, her creaky voice told Jo Beth, who was standing and staring up at the strange figure, watching her with wide eyes, her mouth open in surprise. Read it and believe. Madame Morgana sees all and knows all. The card came out. As Jobeth reached up to take it, the lights in the glass case went out, but Jobeth could still see her dimly in the light of the candles. <clears throat> Put another penny in, Miss Fenton called. I think Mary Rose and I have found the rockets. Never mind, Mary Rose shouted hastily. It's the right box. We don't need Madame Morgana anymore. Jobeth looked down at the card in her hand. Strange things will happen to you in a place of mystery. You will fear for your life, but you will be saved. Tell no one of your adventures. They will not believe you. Joe Best stared up at Madame Morgana again in amazement. How could a wooden figure, and only half a one at that, have known about all the things that had happened to her and Mary Rose? Going back upstairs, Joe Beth was very thoughtful. While Miss Fenton explained, examined the rockets when they were back on the second floor, Joe Beth told her sister, This isn't a house. It's a museum. I'll tell you one thing, Mary Rose, if we ever get out of here, alive, I mean, I'm never, ever in my whole life going to tell people about this place. Why not? That's so silly. People will want to know, won't they, where we've been all this time and all? Joe Beth shook her head stubbornly. I'm not going to say one word. She looked up at the minor bird who had flown back to its cage some time ago. It had been dozing when they had all come back into the room. Now it sleepily said, off with their heads. Not one word to anybody about anything, Jo Beth added firmly.